What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. And in today's video guys, we're gonna be going over how to edit real estate photography shot on the iPhone in Adobe Lightroom. This was a requested video, so please let me know if I answered your questions down in the comment section down below and if you have any other questions as well. I picked a couple of different homes for this so I could give you guys a couple of different examples. But with that being said, let's not waste any time and dive right into the video. All right, so we're in Lightroom Classic now. And a few things before you start editing. One, make sure you're in Lightroom Classic and not the new Lightroom. This Lightroom Classic is a lot easier to edit in than the other Lightroom. And I liked the other one for a while, but I've since moved on to this one because it can select objects a lot more efficiently than the other one from what I've seen. And number two, make sure that your brightness on your computer is at a healthy range, usually around like the middle Sometimes your computer can auto adjust the display colors and when you finish editing, you may find that your color and your lighting looks really good and then when you deliver it to your client, they may be like, why are the photos so dark? And then you'll go and look at your display and realize that you have the brightness all the way up and it can really affect the photo. So those are two things you wanna make sure before you start editing. So let's jump into this first one here. This is just of a regular bathroom and we're gonna do a couple things right off the bat. So you wanna make sure you go to develop, that's gonna bring up the whole editing platform. Then if you're new to editing, one of the first things you can do is you can go down here to auto, click auto, and it'll just give you a very basic edited version of it. And one other thing to look at before we get down into the editing part of it is you wanna look at what is called the histogram. The histogram is gonna tell you a lot of different things about exposure, the blacks, the whites, the saturation. And if you're a beginner, what you really wanna know is that you make sure that you're gonna try to keep it in between the middle and to the right side. That's gonna keep it the most organized and you wanna keep your colors as even as possible. So right now we've kinda of got a healthy balance with most of our exposure being in the middle. And in the future, again, if you have any questions or I go too fast, just let me know in the comment section and I will help you out there. So moving down here, one of the first things I like to do is I do like to crank the exposure up. So I'm sitting right to, you know, towards the middle of the right of the histogram. Again, not every photo is gonna look good when it's super bright. And as you can see, the more you go to the right, the farther it goes. But typically I like to kind of start off a little bit higher exposure, just bring up the overall brightness. And then I like to go down to highlights and reduce the highlights just a little bit or a lot, depending on the photo. The exposure will bring the overall brightness of the photo up and the highlights will reduce the brightness in some of the brightest areas probably around the light bulbs and maybe the window area, anything else that's super bright in the photo. Also, this photo doesn't have too many shadows, but reducing the shadows will help you bring out some of the dark areas, but you have to be careful when reducing the shadows and the blacks whenever you're using your iPhone to edit real estate photography, because sometimes it can cause a lot of noise in the photo, which I'll show you an example here. It can get somewhat pixelated if you look in the bottom corners, and it's barely noticeable if you're not looking for it, but if you're a photographer, it's something that you can kind of identify or notice. So that's just something to take note of and account for. One of the other tricks I like to do as a photographer or an editor is I like to go to the dehaze tool when I'm doing interior photography and I wanna increase the brightness just a little bit. I'll make it a negative balance on the dehaze just a little bit. That'll make it a little bit wider and a little bit more airy and light in the photo. And then if you increase the clarity and increase the texture, it will reduce the amount of haziness that the negative dehaze brings. So it kind of balances out each other and it makes the photo a little bit more airy. One of the other things I wanna get rid of too is if you notice there's like a purple kind of back color from the window right there. And that's gonna be probably a blue tint. So I'm gonna go down, scroll all the way down here to the color selectors. Now this is what separates an amateur from a professional photographer. Most of the time you'll see a lot of people that are editing on their phones, they'll go to saturation and they'll crank it all the way up. And it's an issue because you can't really crank one part of it without messing with all the other colors. And if you're editing on the iPhone and you're not editing with anything else, it's pretty challenging to make the photo still look neat and uniform if you're just using the saturation. Using the HSL color selector tools allow you to pick which colors you want to increase the saturation or decrease the color and I'm gonna show you here right now. So we're gonna to go to blue here. We're just gonna reduce the saturation. This means that we're going to get rid of the blue and it's gonna make it just white. If we were to increase it, it's gonna make the blue stand out more, but decreasing the saturation is going to decrease the color. And so it helps even out the photo a little bit more. And if you'd like to, you can also highlight the curtain colors, maybe increase the pinks if you want to. You can increase the reds a little bit more and make the photo look a little bit more even. 
So that alone makes the photo look a little bit better. And if you wanna check your work from what the original photo looks like, all you do, and this is on Mac, if you hit the backslash, and I'll put it on the screen as well, you hit the backslash, you can see what the photo originally looked like. And then if you hit it again, it brings up what the photo looks like now. So as you can see, we made some pretty good changes and we didn't do too much in the photo because it didn't require a whole lot, but just those couple of changes make the photo look a little bit better and a little bit more nice and a little bit more presentable for your MLS. So moving into this photo, I'm really excited to do this one because it shows you leading upstairs and it also shows you leading into the kitchen and the guest bedrooms. It's a really great angle and a really great shot overall. But as you can see, the left side is very dark while the right side has a lot more lighting. So right off the bat, what you can do is you can hit auto and it'll help balance out the photo just a little bit. And it kind of gives you again, if you're a beginner, a little bit of a head start on where to edit and how to edit. So you can kind of mess around with your sliders here and change the photo up a little bit. The temperature is gonna allow you to change the overall temperature of the photo. So if it's too yellow, you can always move it down to blue so it makes it a little bit more even and fluorescent as such. And this is where we're gonna make a huge difference. So now we're gonna go over to the masking tool. We're gonna to go to a linear gradient. This is gonna bring up a linear gradient. And what you're going to do is you're going to click down and you're going to hold and drag the red area is gonna be the area that's gonna be affected. And the more you pull is the more it's going to bleed over into the other areas and it's going to fade into those areas. So if you want it to fade a lot, then you pull a lot. If you don't want it to fade a lot, just kind of shrink it down. So we're gonna shrink it down just to about right here, just so it's not too much in the way. And now it's only gonna affect this area of the staircase. So now we're gonna increase the exposure of this area, reduce the highlights just a little bit. And now that you're the photographer and you're the one editing, you can really choose on how bright or how dark you want this photo to be and how much the clarity is and et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna pull it out just a little bit more just so it kind of bleeds over into the arm rest here. So then moving down to clarity, you can kind of adjust the texture and how much of the staircase you actually want presented. If you wanna make it a little bit brighter, a little bit darker, again, that is entirely up to you. And then you can play around with your, your markers as well. And as you can tell already, you see the histogram had moved drastically and now it's kind of hanging out in the middle over to the right, which is what you want to see. And we're moving kind of quickly through these photos. So of course, whenever I'm editing photos for a client, I take a lot more time when I'm editing and I want to make sure that every photo looks really good. But for the purpose of this video, I want to make sure that you guys are getting the most out of this video. One last thing to highlight before we move on to the next photo is that we did not do a window pool in this photo and there's a reason for that. So the rule with window pools from what I learned when I was doing real estate photography is that you only need to do window pools is if there's a subject out there that really needs to be captured or it really needs to be focused in. Right now our subject is the staircase leading into the second floor and it leads into the dining room and the guest rooms. We're not so much focused on what's going on outside of the window. So unless there's a view where there's something that we really want to see outside of this window, we don't really need to do a window pool unless it's required. So it's completely up to you if you want to put in the extra work to do the window pools or not. I can't remember if I did one for this photo. I don't believe I did, but when I did do the dining room and the living room, I made sure to do window pools because you want to be able to see the view outside of the kitchen. So if we go and look at our before and after, you can already see that there's a huge difference in the color and the brightness. And again, if you wanna to go to the right side and you wanna do a little bit more editing, that's fine. You can also play around with the shadows and the black slider as well to increase the right side as well as the left side. And if you wanna just focus on the right side, you can also create another linear gradient to focus on the right side as well. So this client wanted some cool photos that were a little unique to the property. So we did a little bit different stuff and we did it with the camera as well, but we took some with the iPhone to show you an example of one of the photos I took with the bathtub, but in this case, we did the sink or the vanities over here. So one of the things you can do is again, hit auto. It's gonna boost everything up. Now there is a lot of noise in the back right of here, but that's okay. And the reason for that is because our focus right now is the vanity set. We're not focused on the background. We're not focused on the other sink. We're focused on this sink. We wanna show mostly the brand and we wanna show how nice it is and how clear the water is. And we really wanna focus on the vanity. We have other photos that we took of the bathroom, but in this case, we don't really need to focus on that because the focus of the photo is the vanity set. One of the things I wanna show you that you can do in these kind of circumstances, I don't wanna to waste too much time editing the whole photo, but we're gonna to go to our masking tool again. And now we're gonna to go to objects. 
With objects, what you're going to do is you're going to hold the clicker down and you're going to draw over the object that you want to highlight. So we're gonna draw over it roughly as best we can. And what it should do now is highlight the object here. If you need to, we can use the brush. We can go to the mask that we already have created and then click the brush. And what I like about Classic that the other Lightroom does not do, typically Lightroom Classic knows what object you're trying to highlight and it won't highlight the background. It did a little bit right there, but we have a pretty big brush selected. But now we've got our whole object highlighted and now we can edit just this object alone. So with our mask selected, and you'll know if your mask is selected because it'll be a lighter gray tone than the regular gray tone. This is going to just edit the sync. If you go down here, you can still edit the rest of the photo. So some of the things we can do right here is we can either increase or decrease the exposure. I'm gonna decrease the highlights. I wanna increase the saturation because it's not really gonna affect the overall photo. And I really wanna capture that kind of orange accent color right there without affecting the whole photo. The cool thing about this is it's not going to affect the rest of the photo. It's only gonna affect the sync vanity. So you don't have to worry about adjusting the colors and having issues with the other part of the photo. This is a great way to capture objects and make things that are focused in the photo a little bit more accented and helps you focus on the subject a little bit more. And you can play around with this and do whatever you want. But even if you look at the original photo, we've already been able to accent it a little bit more. And we can also see that the vanity is a little bit shinier and a little bit nicer. You can then go and edit all the other stuff, but for the purpose of the video, we're not gonna get into all that. So we're gonna do one more edit here and we're gonna do this house that we did. So this photo was really nice and ideally when I photograph, I like to photograph on a sunny day that has some overcast because it gives me the opportunity to get the sun shining on the house in some photos and in other photos, I can have a cloud coverage and I can play with the photo a little bit more. In this case here, we have a sky that had a little bit overcast and it was covering the sun, which gave us a nice cloudy but sunny photo and gives us a little bit more room to work on with this manufactured home. So now getting into the editing, if we hit auto again, it's gonna give us a little bit of a nice boosted photo. And honestly, if you are not trying to sell these to a client and you're a realtor yourself, this photo doesn't already look too bad. It looks pretty nice and you got overall nice brightness and you got an even spread on your histogram. So you wouldn't be in too bad a shape if you just uploaded this photo yourself. But if you wanna to touch up, there's a couple of different things you can do. So again, we're gonna increase our exposure. We're gonna reduce our highlights. And the next thing that we're gonna do, I like to do is I like to go down to my greens and yellows. I know this is kind of like skipping a step, but I always like to see what I can do with the grass and how I can affect the color of the overall photo. Typically the grass is a highlight of the photo. And I like to see what change in the color of it will do and how it makes me feel when I look at the photo. So one of the things that we can do now that we have the grass edited, we're gonna go to our mask again, but this time, now I know we've already done objects, we've already done linear gradients. Now we're gonna go to subject. When you hit subject, the software is going to determine what it thinks the subject is. And typically with Lightroom Classic, it's pretty spot on. So we're gonna hit subject here, and it's going to highlight this whole house. So it got it pretty much on the mark, but we don't want this house in the part of the editing. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to brush and we're going to nicely edit this part of the photo out. Again, using shift lets us do a straight line so it makes it a little bit more even. So I didn't click off of it and it's kind of getting in my way now. So make sure if you're gonna erase, just kind of click somewhere off in the photo that's not gonna get in your way. So now that we have our subject all highlighted, this skips a huge step. When I first started, I was trying to brush stroke everything into here and it was a complete waste of time. And when I figured this out, I was not too thrilled. So hopefully you learned something really quick and you get to save a step that I was mistaking for a while. So we can kind of reduce our highlights. We can reduce our shadows a little bit and it kind of increases the overall lightness of the photo or the overall lightness of the subject. And again, this is just gonna be up to you what you wanna do with the photo and how you wanna edit it. This is a great tool whenever you're trying to make a twilight photo for a client and you wanna either make the house look a little bit darker or a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna show you two more tricks here that you can do before we sign off. So now we're gonna go to select sky. This is gonna grab the whole sky and it's gonna do its best to eliminate any trees in the area. Again, I was using a linear gradient when I started doing this and it was a huge waste of time. And hopefully again, I'm saving you guys some time and some effort here. So that makes the sky a little bit more lighter and you can go down to the blue here and you can edit how much blue you actually want in the photo. 
again, a lot of newbies or people that don't really know what they're doing, they'll just go to saturation and they'll just crank everything up. And then the photo looks way oversaturated and the photo just doesn't look good. There's nothing wrong with cranking up a little bit of saturation, but you wanna be very modest with how much saturation you actually use. So lastly, I wanna show you guys one more trick. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna to go to select objects and we've got a large brush here and we're gonna go over these bushes. Now, we just moved out of fall, but let's pretend that it's still fall weather and we wanna add a little bit of a fall theme to our photo. So we have one object there selected. So then we're gonna to go to the plus sign, we're gonna to go to objects and we're gonna do these for the other two bushes now that we have that one selected object on our other two so now what we're going to do here is we're just going to affect the hue now the hue is something that you typically won't use unless you want to change the color of something specifically but let's say we want to give this a little bit more of a fall theme now we can crank up just a little bit of the hue here make it negative and we can give it more of an orange tint now it's not necessary for this photo, but it's just a way to be creative and add a little bit more color or change the color up in your photo. So if we look at our original here, we can see that we spruced it up a little bit. We made it a little bit more brighter and we made the photo look a little bit nicer overall. Also in Photoshop, one of the things we would do, I don't know if you noticed, but there's some alibis here or there's some things in the photo. I don't know if those are bottles or trash or what it was, but once we take this photo to Photoshop, then we would edit those out and we would just make the grass look completely clean and make sure there's nothing laying down in the grass. And that pretty much wraps us up. If you found this content useful, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. It goes a long way and helps us grow our channel and reach a larger audience and I would really appreciate it. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great start to your New Year's and I will see you guys in the next video.